It's cold this morning. I'm surprised you guys are not all like huddled up because I, I would be like, my wife's not feeling well this morning, so I couldn't huddle with her. But um, I'm grateful to be here this morning. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Can we turn those other lights up? The, yeah, this, yeah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Come here yesterday, and I just I got serious with the Lord and <laughs> some of the stuff that He put on my heart. I mean, I just was centering up with Him. I was practicing what I preach, you know. And I was, um, you know, I know I'm not on the outside, but you know, I I, I always want to be in the center. And no, last week we talked about being on the outside and not knowing God, then coming to a place of knowing Him and kind of being stagnant in that place and then coming to the center of God's will for our life and that's what I want always for my life is to stay in the center, remain in the center God has called us here for a reason to this city there's something that he's gathered us together to do there's a reason there's a reason behind the water we're the only church in the city that has a water immersion there's baptisms. This is different than baptisms. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that we're special in any way because people are still getting saved in the streets. They're getting healed in the streets. They're getting saved and healed at the altars, at their seats. But there's just something different that God is doing, something that he's trying to show us, something he's trying to help us with and, and get us in the grasp of knowing who he is. And what our goal is, what our mission is. And today we're going to talk about, we're going to read from the scripture in Matthew chapter 13, starting with verse 53. And I'm going to read through it, and then we're going to break it down. I'm going to be reading back and forth from the King James and the NASB version. There's so many versions out there. I like the NASB because um, it's, it seems like a more accurate version. The King James is a translated version out of, out of Latin um, from a poet, King James. And so translated over and then, then there's a new King James which takes out the thou's and the shall doeth, ditheth, and all those things and all the things that get you all tongue-tied. So New King James just takes all those things out, but the NASB just breaks it down a little bit, and then you go to some of these more diluted versions that just break it down even more and more and more and put it in our human words or our words that we talk back and forth to each other today. Because we don't say, how art thou doingeth? I don't think if we doeth, but we mighteth. I don't knoweth. But so try to, try to find a version that's accurate. And the, in, in the um, NASB version was brought straight from the, the, um, the Hebrew in, into English. Um, the King James was brought from Hebrew to, uh, Hebrew to Latin and then to King James from Latin. So that's why, the, that's why it's kind of like it is. It's, it's harder to understand. So find a good Bible that you can understand what the wording is saying because the message is the same in all of them. But there are a few of them I want to remind you. I just want to tell you and give you a heads up. The NIV Bible has kind of taken some things out that it shouldn't have taken out. There's some people that are on the board that wrote that Bible um, and I, I won't go into the details, and you can look it up, but, but there's some things that were, should have been in there. It's been worded different to kind of stuff that's not okay to make it okay. And so um, we don't want to do that because we don't want to change the Word of God ever um, because His Word remains the same. So I'm going to read this out of the NASB, and it says here, And he came to his hometown and began teaching in their synagogues, so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers? Is not this the carpenter's son? 
Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not with us? Where did he get all these things? Then they took offense at him. But Jesus said to him, to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, in his own household. And he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, there's people that are out cold today. They're out in a cold. They have no home to live in. Father, they're they're seemingly so far on the outside. They're so far down. They're reaching up to touch rock bottom, Lord. We're interceding for them this morning. God, I just pray this morning that you will bring a warm place for them to come to. That they would come to an understanding, God, that, that they're living on the outside. That you have so much more for them on the inside. God, you have a warm church, a warm body to be next to, Lord. You have warmth for them. So we just praise you right now for the ones that are out in the cold. And we ask that, God, you would just... Bless them and encourage them and strengthen them. God, that we could be a light that lights in their life, shines for them, Lord. God, that we can go out and do what we are called to do, what we're supposed to do, and reach out to a lost and dying world. Lord, without enabling them, but drawing them into you, without judging them, but drawing them into you, Lord. We thank you this morning for this word how we're going to break it down, God, that it's all about you and what you're doing. So we praise you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys good? You got your Bibles? All right, and it says this, and it says, and he came to his hometown and began teaching them in the synagogues. Now, Jesus, remember he was born as a little boy in a manger. He didn't come like everybody thought he should come. They had big plans. They thought their Messiah was going to come, and he was just going to be this guy that was going to come and be a a king and a ruler and bring an army with him. But Jesus didn't come that way. Some things in life are not going to come the way you expect them to come. We have to understand that God does things differently than we understand how he should do things. And we know that Jesus, when he was 12 years old, he started walking into his identity. He become, he, he understood what he was supposed to do. But from the age of 12 to 30, we, we can only speculate what happened in between that time. And I believe what happened in that time, that he grew up in this city. As a little boy, he grew up. And they got to watch him be a teenager. They got to watch him with his father, Joseph, and learn how to be a carpenter and a better carpenter. And they probably bought some of his stuff that he made. So they knew him very well. They knew the family very well. They knew who Mary was. They might have even kind of speculated on the story that, that not sure where Jesus came from or if, or if he, Joseph was really the father or all these things. You know, just all the speculation that could have went on in, in that time. Because you remember when, when Mary, when she left, that she went to see Elizabeth. And remember when she saw Elizabeth and... When she spoke to Elizabeth, John the Baptist was inside of her, and he just jumped for joy inside in the spirit, and he was filled with the spirit inside as a baby. So a lot of things happened. They've seen a lot of things, but here Jesus is growing up as a little boy into this city, so they knew all the things about him. And I'm sure he was a good boy. I'm sure that he minded his parents. Even though when, when he was 12, he stayed back, and, and they didn't know why he, where he was. And, they, and when he walked with the caravan, they thought he might have been back with the other ones. And no, he stayed clear back. And so they went back and found him. And they, they questioned, why, why are you doing this? I mean, you scared us. I mean, I can imagine. They were scared. Why did you stay back? Don't you know I'm about my father's business is what he said to him. He knew who he was. He knew what his mission was. But it wasn't his time. There is a time that God's going to call and he's going to make you famous for him. 
Some people are trying to make themselves famous. Every time you do something good, you post it on social media. Look what I did. Look at me. When you read your Bible, you lay it all out. You have your little cup of coffee in your Bible, and you lay it out, and you snap a photo of yourself and say, look at me. Look at what I'm doing right now. I'm praising God. I'm worshiping. And we make it all about us. But I want you to know, if we would stop that, there's going to be a time that God is going to rise you up. It's going to be in his timing. If you're in the center of his will, it's going to be in his timing. He's going to make you famous for him. He's going to bring you to the light because he is in the light and he lives inside of you. But it wasn't Jesus' time yet. So he comes to this city. He comes to his own city, and he starts teaching them in the synagogues. Now, you can imagine, G you can imagine Jesus in the synagogues. He's reading from the Scripture, but he's not only reading the Scripture, he understands what it is. He understands because he is the Word. He understands exactly what it means, what he's saying to the people. And now it takes, in, in those times it would take to be a rabbi 5, 10, 15, 20 years to get to that kind of an understanding of the Word of God. But here Jesus, they knew him as a little boy and he was raised up as a carpenter. And they have some of his chairs and things in their house. But now he's in the synagogue and he's talking like he's talking. And they are so amazed and astonished at what he's saying. And they're thinking, and they're saying even out loud, how can this young boy that we know from a little boy grow into what we're seeing? Did he go to school? I mean, the speculation, did he ever go to school to be a rabbi? We didn't know that. We, he's been here being a carpenter his whole life. So all the speculation, and they start, and they're like marveling. They, we heard that he was healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons. Some of them might even have saw what he was doing at times. Some of them might have seen the things that Jesus was doing. And in all of that, standing in front of Jesus, hearing what he's saying, hearing how he's breaking down the word of God, hearing how it's amazing them and how it's like moving them and how it's, it's bringing them to a, a place of wow, wow, wow. How can this boy know all of this stuff? Because it makes so much sense. You know, when Jesus tells you a story, it makes sense. When you have an encounter with Jesus, it makes sense. When you have an encounter with man in the Word of God, sometimes it don't make sense because we don't know all things. You know, we're trying to understand it, you know, in this app, but we're trying to bring it out to you to where we can understand it. We're studying up on this stuff, and we're trying to give it the best that we know how. But when the master, the one who wrote the Scripture, the one who is Scripture, starts speaking it out to you, it starts you start getting that wow factor. It's like, that makes sense. Well, that makes sense. Well, I didn't think of it that way. Well, I didn't think of it that way or this way or that way. And here they are, and it says, it says that they were, they were amazed and they were astonished at the miraculous powers that he had and the wisdom, the wisdom that Jesus had speaking in the synagogue to them. And they said these words. And this is, I, I want to tell you, I want you to listen to this because it says, they said, is not this the carpenter's son? So now they're questioning. Now all of a sudden they went from amazement to astonishment to we know that he healed the sick and raised the dead and cast out demons. Now they're asking questions. Because why? Because they're leaning on their own understanding now. They went from his understanding now to their own understanding. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. That's leaning on him and not your own understanding. So they went from understanding, leaning on the understanding of God, leaning on the understanding of the word of God that, that, that God was bringing to them because he was speaking it out to them, to questioning. And this is where the enemy comes in. This is where the enemy comes in to kill, steal, and destroy everything that we've ever learned true about God. 
Everything that we've ever known that's right about God. This is where the enemy comes in to kill, steal, and destroy those things. And they said this, it's not this the carpenter's son. Question number one. It's not this Joseph's son. It's not his mother Mary. Was Mary not the one that birthed this child? How can this be that this child knows these things? Are not his brothers with us? And are not these his sisters right here? In question number five, they said, where did he get all these things? Where did he get all these things? And then look what it says. And they took offense at him. So the questioning came in. They were astonished. They were amazed. They were like, wow, wow, wow. And then they started questioning what they saw, what they were hearing. And then in the questioning, they became offended. See, you don't know who God's going to send where. You don't know if he's going to send you somewhere. Cody, you don't know if he's going to send you somewhere. Uve, that he's going to send you somewhere and he's going to rise you up and you're going to shine. And people are going to say, well, that's just Uve. That's just Cody. Man, he was on the street running drugs. He can't be the one that's going to do this. It can't be that way. Because I know what he did. I know the things he did. I know Uve. I know what he did. And they start questioning how can that person do that? They start questioning my life. How can me, a, a man that's had four dads by the time he was 16, been abused every which way you can imagine, did drugs, sold drugs, been in every imaginable sin you could be in, be here today? How? How can that happen? They start questioning, why not me, God? Why them? Why not me? Those are not questions for you to ask. You center up with God and he will bring the light to you when it's time. He will bring you in the season when it's time. If you're centered with him, and it might be years down the road, Jesus knew who he was at 12 but didn't become and proclaim who he was until he was 30. Does it make sense? So this is what happened. They took offense, and that word offense in the Greek, I'm going to try to pronounce it right, scandalon. I get it right, Randy? Right? Scandalon. Scandalon. I had to think scandal. Scandalon. Scandalon. The word offense means scandalon, which also, which in, in the Greek, which also means a stumbling block. So in their questioning, in their questioning, what they did was created stumbling blocks for themselves to trip over. Instead of following the word of God, hearing what he was saying, following how he was saying it, they questioned and created their own stumbling blocks in front of them. And I asked the Lord about that. I I was going to Google it, and I said, no, I'm not going to Google it. I'm just going to ask God, what is this? So before I even knew the word uh, scandal on and knew what it meant, I just knew it said offended. And I'm like, God, why were they offended? I was going to Google it, and I went ready to Google it, and I said, no. I'm just going to ask you, Lord. And I come up here, and I sit. I sit for about an hour. And I said, God, why did they go from amazement to offense. He said the questioning in their own words have tripped them up and become a stumbling block before them. The offense became a stumbling block. So then I looked it up and offense meant stumbling block. So I was grateful. I was like, thank you, Lord, for giving me that. Before I looked it up, and that's why I gave it to him first, and then he showed me what it was. 
And that's how he wants to do it with us. He wants to show you the word. I want to, and I was astonished and I was amazed and I didn't question it at all. I was like, thank you, Lord, for giving me that word, you know, that I didn't have to go to Google. And Google's great when you need it, but I'm glad I got to go to him and he gave it to me straight from heaven. So we went from amazement to knowing the things that he did to offense because of the words that they had and they questioned God. They questioned, I believe, the sovereignty of God and who he was. The sovereignty of who God really is. And this is what happened. He said, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own hometown. Any other prophet could have came to that city, and they would have received him well. They would have heard everything he had to say. They would have listened to what he said. They would have did what he said to do. But here Jesus come, the prophet of prophets, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who spoke greater than any prophet had ever spoken to him. And they rejected him. And they were offended at him. And their questioning became a stumbling block to them. And because of this, and this is what I do not want to happen in this city. Because of this, many great things could not be done there. Many things could not be done in the city. Much healing could not be done in the city. Why? Because they're questioning of who God sent to bring the word. That's you and me. They're going to question, why that little church? Why God are you using that little church, Life of Love Ministry Center? Why are you using them? Why not our church? Why not this church? And there's a lot of great churches in the city, but why not ours? Why not this? Pastors are going to be, why not me? I met with Several pastors, when we started this in the region, I went to them and I said, hey, this is what God's doing. I want you to know that I want to honor you guys. I want to respect you guys. And um, I don't want to take any of your people. Some of them said, You're, you'll get some of our people. So when we started in the beginning, anyone that come, I said, where are you from? They're like, I'm from this church. I'm like, well, go back and make it right with your pastor and make sure you guys are on the good up and up before you come over here and make sure it's God telling you to come over here because that pastor has a vision. He has something that God put on his heart to do, and you need to help him and lift him up as he's doing what he's called to do. But if God said to come, then come. I want you to be where you're going to grow. I want you to go where you're going to grow. If it ain't here, go to where you're going to grow. But he could not do many things in his own place. He could not heal them like he wanted to heal them. There were some that were healed. There were some that believed. But the majority of them didn't. Because they were looking at that little boy, that 12-year-old boy, that 15, 16, 17, 18-year-old boy, that 30-year-old man. That's what they were looking at. They wasn't looking at the big picture. God had brought prophets out many times out of the blue Bam, a prophet would show up and they would just believe what he was saying. Here Jesus shows up and they reject him. And he's the only one that did the miraculous miracles that, that they had seen and heard about. He was the only one that performed those kind of miracles. Raising the dead, casting out demons. And it says, he could not do all those things because of their unbelief. What do you believe this morning? What do you believe this morning? Jesus didn't boast on himself. Most of the time, Jesus, when he touched someone, when he healed someone, he would say, go and tell no one. Go and tell no one what I did. What if growing a church was about going and telling no one. 
What if growing a body of people was to go and tell no one what just happened? When someone gets healed, what, what would it look like if someone gets healed and we see a miraculous happen and we go, you know what, God, thank you for that, and we don't tell anybody about it? What would that church look like? Because Jesus always, he went up to pray alone. He would come down. He would just swoop and do a miracle. But he would say, go and tell no, Don't tell anybody. Don't tell them. Don't tell nobody what I did. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Look what I did. I just went out. I just went out and prayed with all these people, and they all got healed. And then you build a following. You build a following for you. It seems like men today are learning how to build their own following. See how many people can follow me on social media. And what are you doing with that platform? Is it turned around and going to him? Or are they following you? I don't even know why I'm on it about platforms because I don't get on social media that often. I know a lot about it. I know it's uh, dangerous to a point. I know it's beneficial to a point. Devil means it for evil. God means it for good. We're going to have to sort that out. What is good? If you're promoting self, I should ask the Lord about it. We're not here to promote self. We're here to promote him. As I was praying yesterday, the Lord came on me and I felt like he said this. He said, your own words have become stumbling blocks in your lives. You praise me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. Your minds are far from me. When I'm with you and when I was with you, you acknowledged all that you had seen, all that was done. But you still did not believe because you would not let me in. You truly would not let me in. Truly would not let me in. He says, come and I will give you rest. I will give you the desires of your heart. And I will align them with my will for you. I am all you need. I will crush those things that are in front of you, that are tripping you up and making you fall. There is nothing that I wouldn't do for you, for the best interest of you, and for the best interest of heaven and all that it has for you. You have in your hearts envy and strife and things that I would never put there. These things are keeping you from going to the center. These things are keeping you going in circles, in circles, in circles, never being able to be in the center. And you were always on the move, but never moving closer to me. You're busy, busy doing things for me, but not doing. What I've meant for you to do in your life, your fears have kept you from me. Your pride has kept you from me. Your actions have kept you from me. And he said, will you truly give yourself to me? Truly give yourself to me. Last week we had about 70 people come up here to the altar to challenge being centered up with Jesus. Wednesday night we had about 13 in a prayer meeting. I'm not going to get on to you because I know that people have things that they're doing. They got things in life. But we make time for other things. We make time to go to ball games. We make time to do other things in life. Can we make time to center up? When we come together as a body and unite ourselves together and we light ourselves up together, it's changing things. 
the small group that gets together here on Wednesday night are changing things in the atmosphere. And the large group is going to change things even more. I want this place to be a place that we don't have to, we don't even have to advertise on social media, but people will come because they feel like they need to be here. They will come because they feel something in them to go to this place, to this parking lot, and come and see what God's doing. That's what God wants us to do. He'll make us famous for Him. He'll make life of love famous for Him if we center up and do what He's called us to do. His heart is for you. He wants you. He wants relationship with you. He wants fellowship with you. He wants to know you, that he knows you, that he knows you inside and out. Don't let your words become a stumbling block in your life. Let them become a stepladder in your life to take you from glory to glory to glory to glory. To live closer and closer and closer to him. To bring heaven down further and further and further. Let's stand. Got that heat cranked up and it's still cold in here. <laughs> Randy said, do a fire tunnel. Is that you, Randy, that said that? A fire tunnel. Anybody know what a fire tunnel is? It's awesome. Fire tunnels are awesome. Yeah. Offense means stumbling block. It also means to sin. When you're offended, you're sinning. You're stepping into sin. When you're offended, you're creating stumbling blocks in front of you that you're going to trip over and fall. And when Jesus showed me this will, because he knew that there was going to be, there was going to be things thrown at us, there was going to be accusations, there was going to be all these things thrown at us, misconceptions. You, you wouldn't believe the things that some people believe that, that they've said that's happened that didn't happen or hasn't happened and they've spoken that it's happened. Billy Graham was my hero. And someone quit coming to the church because they, they said that, that I, didn't, I didn't like Billy Graham. <laughs> That's who I got saved under. Misconceptions, offense, posted on social media. Pastor of life of love, don't like Billy Graham. Like, who are you people? What are you hearing? Let's be careful, guys. Listen, let's be careful what we post on our social medias. Because if I randomly right now pulled up one of your social medias, like drew it out of a hat, you probably wouldn't want me to. If I literally pulled it up and we put it on the screen, we all just started scrolling through it. Or your Google searches. Would anybody be up for that? <laughs> I would, because you know, I would be up for it. But there's some people that would not be up for that if I was like, hey, can we look at your Google search and just see what your history is? Oh, man. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, he does. He sees it all. Let's be careful, guys, to not self-promote. Putting those stumbling blocks in front of us. When you self-promote, you're creating a dangerous place, a dangerous platform for yourself. Listen, everybody don't have to know, and I don't even know why I'm going here, but it just it's it, I see it all the time. Everybody don't have to know that you're going on vacation. Matter of fact, the thieves, if they know you're going on vacation, they're going to stalk your house out. Let's get real. They say, oh, wow, so-and-so's going on vacation. Hey, guys, now's our time to come and take advantage of that. But what I do, 
if Shelly, I tell her when we go on vacation, don't post one picture that we're on vacation. When we get back, you can post them. They can think we're on vacation. When they come, I'll be standing here at the door, welcoming, welcoming them in to pray with them. But let's be careful. Let's be careful how our platforms look. Let's be careful the platforms that we're building, the following that we're building. If we're building a following, let's lead them to him. Not to, not to our own things. Not to make us puff us up. The Father, we just thank you, Lord, for today. You know everyone that's here, God. You know their hearts. You know the ones, Lord, that have prayed last week to center up. And I pray that you continue to work in their lives, work in their hearts, God. That they would be ever moving closer to that center, God. That they would not be like a, like a possum hitting a road going in circles and circles and circles and circles, Lord but that they would truly find the center that you have for them. They would truly line up to the center that you have for them, knowing whose they are and whose they are, God. Knowing that you have a call for them, that you have a purpose for them. It might not be as great as they want it to be, God, but if it's the center of your will, it's going to be as great as you need it to be to reach the most in that moment. So I just thank you, Lord, God, that you're moving. I thank you, God, that you're kind of keeping this little place hid a little bit. There's going to be a day the floodgates are going to open, God, and you're readying your army right now. You're preparing your army right now for when the wounded come from the right and left, the north, south, and east, Father, that, that your army is going to be prepared to handle them. Your army is going to be ready to handle them, Lord. So, Father, we just break off all the fence right now. We break it off right now. Just, just break it off in your own life right now. All offense that you've taken against anyone, all words that you've spoken negative, all gossip, we break it off right now. The things all about me, all about me, all about me, we break it off right now. Father, we give you our first fruits. That's with our time, with our money, with our energy, everything, God. We give it to you first. And you do with it what you want with it, Lord. We will stay as low as we have to stay until you're ready to bring us up, if that ever happens. But God, we're prepared to stay low and just stay there if we need to, just to be an example. So God, we love you. We praise you. We glorify you. If there's anyone that's not saved today, that you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, everybody just close your eyes. Is there anyone here this morning that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Truly know him. He said, some of you truly, truly won't let me in. Is there anyone that wants to pray this morning? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just raise your hand. If there's anybody, just raise your hand. I'm thankful this morning. We have a house full of saved people this morning. House full of believers this morning. Father, I just speak over them right now, God, that you would just Move them to center. Move them to center, Lord. Everything that you have for them, move them to center. Fulfill their dreams, their visions, God. Fulfill their lives with the things of you. Everything that you have for them, fulfill them this morning. And we just thank you for that, God. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you for heat, Lord. We thank you for providing the heat and the homeless out in the streets today. The different warming stations that they can go to. We thank you for providing those places for them. Have your will in a way this week, Lord. We just glorify you. We'll see you all Wednesday. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day.